everyone, welcome once again to Shield Discussions. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm the real Manos. Manos, we are back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in uh, more really interesting, fascinating stuff after the uh, sort of destruction and dismantlement of S.H.I.E.L.D. Before we talk about today's episode, Providence, we're going to go back for a few moments to turn, turn, turn and talk about a few uh, audience notes and questions. Uh, the first one this time, uh, give me a second, I gotta pull a different document up there it is uh okay the first one today comes from ec cons who says uh it's funny how you mention that this episode is required to be watched twice because last night they pushed the new episode back to nine and re-ran this episode at eight i'm really glad they did that for people that's really cool i agree they uh, mm -hmm. kind of yeah, build yeah, it as a uh, two-hour two episode, two -hour episode. Uh, or two-hour event <laughs> Well, it's just really smart to watch that one a second time, especially before this one, because uh, if you didn't do what I always do, which is watch them twice, uh, you wouldn't pick up on the, those really interesting nuances, uh, especially the stuff I was talking about with Ward and uh, Garrett and the kind of looks they would give each other and stuff. You could tell that they had all this stuff going on and everything they said in front of people meant something different. Uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that... Uh, that uh, ABC thought, yeah, we should probably we should probably run that a second time. Uh, Jeremy B says uh, the person Ward was blaming for what happened to Sky wasn't Fitz or Coulson; it was Garrett. It all makes sense now. Yes, that's so great. Uh, that that is a big deal to me because I thought that whole thing was so crazy off. Um, episodes and episodes ago, I uh, and and um, and a, a few people in the comments uh, kept wondering why I was making such a big deal out of that, and uh, I, I really think that they wanted us to wonder about that. Uh, so th so we had all these um, in, in the comments, we had all these speculations about who it was that um, that Ward was blaming for what happened to Sky, and uh, that gives us. I mean, it's great character stuff for him because it shows us that um, from that far back that like. He really cares about that character, even though he's been Hydra this whole time. So he's been sort of compromised. And um, that's the one character thing that we still sort of have to latch on to to show, to show us that he's, he's not just a straight-up crazy bad guy. He does have feelings also. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, actually, that was something, yeah, you really got kind of uh, stuck on. And it, it, it's nice to really now really know the, the real true meaning behind that that line, which did have kind of an, uh, a strange off-putting vibe to it. Like, who's he blaming? Uh, Mass Sci-Fi Fan um, had uh, had kind of a long comment. I'll read this real fast. Uh, while I did think this was a good episode overall, I just wanted to put this out there. Personally, I hated the ending scene with Ward killing Victoria Hand and freeing Garrett, uh, and I hated it for two main reasons. Uh, one, it completely wasted Victoria's Hand's character and the change she went through just for the sake of a, of a stock death, and two, it completely destroys Ward's character, making him straight up uh, kill S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and not even giving us a reason for why he did it. Uh, I'm sure they're going to explain it in the next few episodes, episodes, but after killing fellow agents, his character is now completely irredeemable, in my opinion. Those are just my thoughts, and like I said, I really did like this episode, except for the ending. Um, I, I for, first of all, about the uh, about his uh, first part of that, uh, that, it, that it wastes Victoria's hands character, um, I gotta disagree with that, because I really dug um, the, the, the idea of her having to pay for being so uh, in, incredibly ruthless, that like she go she went too far in the other direction and fin and, and, and finally kind of got her her just desserts with that. What do you think? I actually agree because her death she's died twice. She's died in the comics and she's died in the show now. And this death actually is more fitting to her storyline and her story arc as a character because I felt like uh almost confused not not maybe not confused, but I, I felt uh, that her death in the comics was just really, I don't know, kind of out of left field, really. Not having to do with anything that she was involved with espionage-wise. Um, so this one was directly tied into what she was doing. So I, I don't know. I, I felt it kind of fit. Uh, and as far as wasting Ward's character, I, I guess agree to disagree, because I actually think this makes Ward's character. Uh, and I, I think this brings what I thought was a fairly dull character into the light. And now I, I think he is potentially a fascinating character 
Yeah, that's exactly how I feel about it. I mean, it, the thing I love is that you and so many other people complained forever that he was boring, and now, especially after after this week's episode, uh, we find out that that was all completely on purpose. Yeah, he's and that he's, he's actually not boring at all. And I'm really enjoying seeing him play the two sides of it. Like, I think that there's a wonderful distinction between who this guy really is, or at least the way he's playing himself with Garrett. Because I got, I just have a feeling that he's so good at manipulating people and so good at being whoever he has to be for a situation that he might have somewhat lost himself. Like, I don't know who this guy really is, and I'm not sure he does either. I, I think also that kind of generic good-looking white guy hero, I, I think now kind of plays to that advantage. Because you can't place, you know, you can't place whatever you want onto this guy, and which makes him trustworthy to uh, all the sorts of different people he, he has to deceive. So, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I just think when he revealed himself to be on the side of Hydra, I was pretty excited, actually. Oh, uh, because... It's like, oh, yes, he's interesting. <laughs> well, and of course, I was shocked in the way I was supposed to be because I have started to come around on him some. Um, and, and, I, and I think, and like the more I thought about it and, and, and watching these episodes a couple times, I'm, I'm finding myself realizing that the whole point of that is to make the audience feel like his friends. Yeah. And like his friends are going to feel when they all find out who he really is and what he's been doing. And so, I mean, like, he duped me, too. I started to like him, and that's that's really cool. Um, especially with all that uh, talk last episode about how Hydra makes you like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, you know when, when it turned out that he was, uh, that, he, that he's actually, you know, working with Garrett and all of that, um, I, you know, you know, at first I was kind of, um, you know, mad in the way I thought I was supposed to be mad. You know what I mean? And then, and then I watched that episode again, and I was like, uh, "But this is really cool." Also, especially because if you think about it, Hydra infiltrating so much of Shield, somebody on that team should have been Hydra. Agreed. And you know, uh, and, and so I like that they didn't pull their punches. Like there have been so many complaints early on on the show that it's not edgy enough for, for for the the espionage kind of thing that it is, and for like what the what Shield is in the comics. And and so like we find out that it wasn't the wholesome, altruistic, everything's okay kind of show we thought it was. Like I kind of think that if if they had planned this all along from the very beginning, I think that they took this risk of trying to make it make something is off all the way through this. You know what I mean? Like, we're not supposed to think that that, that Ward's character makes any sense. We're supposed to go, well, he's two-dimensional and that's really weird. And then it's up to individual people to watch that and say, okay, did they, was everybody else believable enough to do that with one character? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's one of the advantages of, um, I think we talked about, I mentioned this last week, uh, we knew our main heroes in Captain America... Winter Soldier were not going to turn on us. Um, yeah. He didn't have that guarantee on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because these are all new characters. Uh, they could have been, you know, anybody, you know, and the, more of them could have been, you know, Hydra agents. Um, that's, that's absolutely true, yeah. And I, I will say there is still a possibility that there are other people in, that there are other main characters that aren't exactly what we think they are. I don't think anybody else is Hydra, but I do think that it's possible that people have other secrets we don't know about. Exactly. You know, and the, like, like I said last time, and I don't mean to be a broken record, but I, I, I feel like this is one of the first times that a show has made this huge deal out of you can't trust anyone, and I totally buy into it. I couldn't trust anybody last episode. Uh, that's true. That's one of the, that, that, you know, last episode was a really good one. Uh, for just that reason. Um, I, I'm going to read a few more of these, and then we will go on to today's episode. Um, Malnowski, uh and several other people mentioned this too, said that there was an interview posted online uh, that that uh, the guy who plays Ward, Brett Dalton, didn't know about the uh, Hydra thing until Yes Men. So he knew that for a couple episodes longer than I thought he did. That's good. I'm glad he knew about it eventually. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't yeah, tell him. You know, as they shot that. Yeah, and I, you know, maybe it's fair, because I complained that, one of my few complaints about last episode was that he seemed like, now that he knows he's evil, he's kind of hamming that up a little bit. Um, at the same time, he's with Garrett, 
and since they have a rapport together and they're the guys that are working together, it might be harder for, maybe the way he's playing it, maybe his idea is, it's harder for Ward to act like the generic Ward when he's around this guy who actually knows who he really is. And what's really interesting is those two have so much fun together. <laughs> Yeah, that that's got it. That that's kind of that's kind of got to be tough for both of them because, like, I mean, I don't think Ward is snickering the way that Garrett is because Garrett's just playing games. He's having a he's having a good time. But but you can tell there's this rapport between them. Like as angry as he is with what happened to Sky and stuff, and doesn't like that he's you know um, willing to go quite as far as he is. Uh, Ward, I, I feel like still like there's this part of him that kind of has fun with that guy. I, Their kids at the candy store to a degree. I agree. Uh, we'll pro- I don't know. I was going to save this for the episode, but that uh, they they have this interesting rapport, <laughs> which I don't often see between villain partners. Uh, they they almost seem like uh, I don't know like guys or guys who get along at a certain job. Except this job yeah. is Hydra. Yeah, you, yeah, I love that, man. I like, and that's kind of the Whedon sensibility that comes to this. Finally, like, I like, I'm feeling like I'm watching more of a Whedon show now with that sort of thing because that was a big thing for villains in like Buffy and Angel and stuff. Yeah. Not not exactly that same thing, but just that like like you know I don't know if you watched any Buffy, um, at Manos, but I like third... watched a lot of Buffy. Yes. Oh, you did. Okay. The, you remember the mayor in third season? Like that guy is so much fun. He just seems like a regular guy. Yeah. But he's actually this giant snake demon, <laughs> and uh, I, I've got that a little bit with these guys. Like you could, you could see these guys at somebody's family barbecue, or watching a football game together. Yeah, that's what I yeah. like about a lot of Whedon villains is they have a real human sensibility, even when they're inhuman. And also, and I, I, again, we probably should say this for the episode, but we're there. I'm going to say this anyway. I, 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 I feel like uh, part of what makes that so great is that uh, you've got this juxtaposition of everybody thought that this guy had superpowers. And he's just this really regular guy, except that he's great at subterfuge. So while you've got, in, in, in the episode we're about to talk about, you, you've got Reyna um, all... Uh, upset because she thought that she was following this guy who had these mystical powers. Um, they really play that up by making him incredibly normal. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Mr. Crazy Lazy 37 uh, made a great point. I can't believe that I didn't catch this. This is cool stuff. Uh, he says, you guys totally forgot to mention that Fury is alive because of Fitz. It was Fitz who invented slash created the mouse hole device, the one that can cut through pretty much anything, and the one that Fury used to escape from his car and below the road when the Winter Soldier was coming to finish him off. So yeah, Fitz totally saved Fury's life. Oh. That's awesome! Weird. I, I never even thought about that. I didn't either. I never put that together, but I, I can't believe that that, uh, that the movie and the show are that closely related now, that, that, they, that they made it that close-knit. That's really cool. And think about this. Think about this. The movie used stuff from the show... Because, you know, to be honest, um, I was kind of just expecting the show to constantly use stuff from the films and the films not to even reference the show. Uh, you know, like like a like a comic book based on a current TV series, like the TV series isn't going to say anything that, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation was not going to reference anything Peter David was doing in the comic books at the time. Uh, no, but, but the, the comics would have to yeah. You know, constantly refer to uh what the TV show was doing, and I kind of expected that kind of relationship between the... the That's the, true, although I would argue that it's doing a pretty good job of kind of sort of tricking us into thinking that it's going both directions, but if you think about it, with that particular example, and unless you have other examples, with that particular example, they probably just had the Captain America script and said, oh, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Fitz was the guy who created this thing that Fury uses? Uh, well, I, I can't guess of how that came to be. So, all, all I'm saying is I don't think the movie is really using anything in S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, let's see. Well, there's only been one S.H.I.E.L.D.-related movie that's come out since the show started. I mean, yeah, there was Thor, but Thor isn't really, you know, that S.H.I.E.L.D.-related, so. Yeah, but, well, in Iron Man. Yeah, oh, we, oh. And Iron Man 2 Did was Iron very Man 3 come out? No, Iron Man uh, 3 came out before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., didn't it? Yeah, and Iron Man 3 came out before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just saying, I, I don't, I don't think that the movies have, have yet directly taken anything straight from this show. I would be really surprised if that episode was somehow written before Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. 
But anyway, um, Mr. Goodplot, uh, I'm glad I mentioned this because I didn't realize it and I should have looked it up. Uh, he says that Agent Garrett actually is from the comics and was one of the co-founders of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, as one of the Howling Commandos and apparently is currently a cyborg. So I'm, I'm going to have to look into that. <laughs> hey, we saw some cyborg on him today. Not, uh, oh yeah, we did! That's a good point! <laughs> yeah, because he had that, uh, that metal plate in him. Oh, yeah. good Good call. They're doing and it. Considering, yeah, they're doing that. And considering, well, I bet if they go all the way, we're going to see a big knockdown drag out fight between him and Deathlock. Oh, yeah. And that could be super cool. Because think about it. They built Deathlock. Mm-hmm. So, of course, he can have metal in him because he's dealing, because he owns the Centipede Project. Oh, that's cool. That's good stuff. Um... Joe Geary says another thing that's almost kind of funny is that after they play Don't Fear the Reaper, Gary or Garrett is attacked by drones as a prominent attack drone in real life also has the name Reaper. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Rafi uh, Ayala, my theory is maybe Ward is under Hydra mind control the same way Winter Soldier was. He has that blank stare in the mid in the end credits, and his betrayal just contradicts his development as a friend to the rest of the team. Um, I think a lot of people thought that before this episode, and I think it's pretty well confirmed that we're not looking at mind control. Yeah, that was just his acting. But um, uh, I, I kid the actor. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, I think this episode there was a lot of confirming. I mean, he's shooting guys in the head. Yeah, Very and I well, not just that, but but I, I think the biggest confirmation that he that he's not anything like the person um, that he is pretending to be with uh, with the team is when he's on the phone with Sky and he pretends like he likes a football uh, team that he that he doesn't care about. And also, he gives those evil looks when the camera is I mean, when nobody's looking at him. Uh, like yeah, no, well, like you I mean, don't have to fool anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, and of course, most importantly, um, right in this episode, we're, we're told exactly how he got. Well, not exactly, um, but, but, we're, but we're told that Garrett put him there on purpose. Yes. And that, like this whole time, you know, and, and that's that's the whole that's the whole point about Sky is like you could have given me a, a kill order. Um, but since you let me leave everybody alive, now I've developed a personal attachment. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about all that. Uh, Eric Curto, Agent Carter, if they develop the series, um, I don't know if you know that, Manos, but there's supposed to be an Agent Carter TV series yeah, in development. Yeah, oh, Peggy Carter. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, if they develop the, the series, it will most likely go deeper into Hydra uh, and uh, killing Howard Stark and all that. Uh, yeah, I, I think that suddenly there's a lot more of a series there now that we know about Hydra. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about, about the potential for that. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Coulson shot May with her own gun in Icer. She kicked it over to him in the scene. That's from Shmoo Ray. I missed that. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to... Oh, oh, this was funny. Um, Busted Sim says, Part of me wishes that Garrett was listening to Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds. Yeah. At the opening of the episode, because that's because that's the name of the, uh, of, of, the, of the episode. Um, I don't know uh, the lyrics offhand, though, so I don't know how thematic that would have been. Uh, well, it would have been very thematic. In fact, uh, too much so. Uh, the problem with doing that would have been, it would have kind of told me in a heartbeat that he was evil. Yeah. Well, it's like... Uh, to, to everything, to, to there is a season. season. Turn, 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 turn. I guess it would have been thematically close. Oh no, no, it would have been great. And of course, uh, and of course, that's the. I mean, the episode title is is um is is quoting the you know you know um that psalm, those Bible verses. Yeah. Um, and that's what the and and that and that's what the song is doing. Um, but yeah, that would have been way too on the nose. <sighs> I suppose so. Um, because I'm just saying that, like you know, to to everything there is a season. I would have immediately thought, yeah, he's evil. <laughs> Um, okay, let's, uh, oh, oh, one more, um, um, amusing pun. Darth Sandwich. So, uh, the agent who gets thrown out of the car is dead? Good. He never did. Sit well with me. <sighs> Thanks for that. And, <laughs> Manos, I just did that so you'd groan. It's, that's fun. <laughs> Manos, let's jump into to, uh, today's episode um, more than we have already. Uh, it's time for Providence, and uh, why don't why don't you why don't you start us off? Um, uh, just just something general. What did you like? What didn't you like? I really like this episode in that everything is kind of destroyed and still chaotic. Uh, we're getting to see 
uh, the scenes suggested uh, during the closing montage of uh, Captain America film. We're actually seeing that play out. Uh, yeah. All these agents and uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. being dismantled and the government really turning against the, the organization. Uh, I, and and, and Kohan, uh, uh, Coulson still still holding on. Uh, and to the point where people are believing that he's going crazy, like he should just give up and, uh, you know, quit. Uh, which I, I I I enjoyed that actually quite a bit throughout the the episode. Frankly, I, I think that was a really strong piece, and it makes me think about the Captain America film in a different way. Where you know it almost feels like Hydra One when you think about it, because they're still in existence, and Shield apparently is falling apart. Uh, yeah, they lost the day where they didn't get to. Uh, blow up half the world with those helicarriers <laughs> and they got found out and ousted out of this you know multi-generational conspiracy plan of theirs uh and took a heavy loss but they're still active uh well and shield not, is, sure still is active, not but, yeah well and i think uh more, more importantly, another uh, big victory for them is that they've shaken everybody's faith in the system yeah and uh, that's what this episode is mostly about, I think, is faith and, and, and trust. And uh, I really uh, felt for Coulson and uh, was was really impressed with Clark Gregg's performance there, um, especially when the big speech he gives out in the snow. Freaking love that scene. And um, it's, it, you know, you know they, they get out there and uh, th I, I thought it was kind of a big, a, a big reveal when he's like, "Yeah, and we also don't have any gas. That's how sure I am of this. <laughs> like, we, like we can't even lift back off. We're in the middle of freaking nowhere." Um, and uh, you know, there was actually a part of me that that kind of wished that they had made us wait even longer to find out if there was anything there. Oh, that would have been brutal. It would have, but I almost wish we'd had it because um, as much as I felt for Coulson and as much as I bought everybody's doubts um, of him, especially Maze, uh, and, and I want to get in, into that in a second, but um, as much as I as I bought why people weren't sure about him and uh, Fitz and Simmons wanting to believe, him, to believe in him but not sure if they can and all of that, um, th I really never had a point. I, tell me if you did, Manos. There was really never a point where I doubted Coulson. I have not doubted Colson either. Uh, well, frankly, the series kind of hangs on Colson being right. Well, it does. That's true. But I'm just saying, like, it would have been nice. I'm just saying in the moment, like, it would have been nice if, if for uh, for a couple minutes they had been they had been there and they couldn't find any. I guess what I'm saying is they found something too fast. I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. But I mean, and that's really my only gripe about the episode. Mm -hmm. It plays incredibly well. I love that scene. Um, and even you know, throwing the badge and and the and the drone popping out. Like 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 I like how it's revealed and everything. Um, especially because Coulson has to go out in front of that gun. I mean, like that. That's that's how sure he is about this. He just walks right out in front of it unarmed <laughs> and stands there. Yeah, I mean, he put his he put right. he put his um, he put his faith on the table essentially. And what's really sad about all of that is that he's going to have that faith shaken even harder when he finds out about Ward. Oh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be uh, not fun for him. And that, that, I, I guess I, I guess one of the coolest uh, uh, ideas in this, of course, is the um, is, is the shades of gray, the lack of black and white, the, the, the you know, um, it'd be great if you could do everything Coulson's way, and because he wants to tell his whole team everything. Um, we've got that, we've got that moment with the uh, hilarious agent in the bu in the bunker. By the way, I can't believe they got Patton Oswalt. That's hilarious. I know. I'm, um, I'm, I was really happy to see him in the show. He was, he was great. But anyway, so they've got this agent in the bunker, and um, he tells Coulson, you can't tell your team that Fury is alive. And he wants, he wants to tell everybody. And then I really like that they, um, that they right after that directly make it important that, uh, Garrett and Ward think that Fury's dead. Yeah. I, I like, like, I like that. They're like, oh, oh, Fury's dead. Yay. Good. He's dead. And it's like, <laughs> if Coulson had done, if Coulson had done what he wanted to, um, they would have known that immediately because because they he's talked to Sky, so Ward knows where they are. He knows about the secret bunker. Well, he goes there. Yeah, he so does. I mean, like, he would have he would have known everything. So the, I guess the point I'm making is, you, you know, Coulson's got all this faith in Fury, 
but he doesn't like that Fury is making him keep things from his team and that there are still questions. And I feel like if he were to run S.H.I.E.L.D. right now, he would do it almost transparently, or at least transparently with all the agents, right? And Fury, at the end of all this, he's the one that's right. He is, because, you know, uh, you'd think after a while he would he would learn to just trust Fury does what he does for reasons. Yeah. And, you know, not just because he likes keeping secrets. You know, he keeps these secrets for, uh, you know, for real reasons. And I, I don't know. It's possibly because of his uh, his faith has been shaken. I mean, we've been talking about his faith in, in S.H.I.E.L.D. and doing the right thing. But I, I believe it has been damaged and, and his relationship with uh, Fury has been damaged. So I guess that lends to that. But, I mean, yeah, he needs to shut up. On, on this and he just needs to suck it up yeah and, and kind of but the problem is nothing is this simple is it because then at the same time and i love that they put this in the same episode at the same time we find out that fury's been lying to almost the entire agency yeah and that yeah. he's got every single piece of technology that they pretended like they shot in space hidden away somewhere I know. It's, oh, it's, man. It lends itself that to um, the and Avengers team where Jonathan. Captain America like discovers exactly. some of that Hydra hardware and, and the carrier. Well, Garrett, Garrett brings that up, and he says he, th this is this is the guy who tried to uh, who tried to control Tesseract technology. Yeah. And so, like, no, nothing is that simple. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, Coulson's got all this faith in Fury, but his faith in the, in, in, the, in that system they used to have is, 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 is shaken. And then we can't completely trust Fury either. You know, like you, can, you can't you can't trust anybody that's got that much power, mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, but like these are all of the kinds of ideas that you want in 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 this kind of an espionage show, and I'm so glad that they're finally delving into it. Um, and you made a great point earlier about how all of the really interesting things that they didn't have time to deal with in in uh, Winter Soldier because they were dealing with other things. This show is taking and running with. Yeah, and also it would have thrown the pacing off too. Yeah, you just couldn't do it all there. Um, I, I'm just, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed because we f we thought for a long time Winter Soldier was going to present Shield like a totally different organization than the show is, and the show has taken what what that movie did and running with it. And considering I love that movie so much, I'm really glad we're playing in that sandbox because mm -hmm. it's making that movie better for me. And I already love that movie. <laughs> so that's just that's anyway. That's all really fantastic. Um, I'm done gushing now. Now for some specific notes. Um, I, I think, uh, give me just a second here. Um, oh, okay. I, uh, uh, questions, questions. So, um, we know for sure now that Garrett really is the quote unquote clairvoyant. Um, last episode, yeah, we, we had that, but there, there've been a lot of, there's been a lot of speculation that maybe there's even somebody over him. I think this episode made it even more cl crystal clear that he is the, the tip top of all this. Um, who in the world was typing the clairvoyant messages a few episodes ago with the fake clairvoyant when he was in the room. I imagine that was one of his people. Must have been. Well, and of course he's got people, so I guess it could have been anybody. Yeah, he's got, yeah. Uh, uh, he could even have given that guy a script. Or at least he has somebody, well, he, is... or at least he has somebody he trusts to know how to properly, you know, play the character. Respond. Yeah, because it wasn't all pre-recorded, obviously, because there, there's direct responses to things. That's true, that's true. So, yeah, it was somebody he had to trust to do a good job, to pull a Mandarin. Um, Manos, if you don't mind, I'm going to do what I usually do and just uh, just go down kind of chronologically um, some, some individual notes I have listed here. Um, I was pretty darn sure in the uh, teaser that what was in that box was a flower dress. I don't think anybody was surprised by that being a flower dress. <laughs> Sometimes a just... flower dress is just a flower dress. <laughs> you know what? I bet that's where they're going with that whole thing, where they're trying to make us all wonder what that symbolizes, and it's nothing at all. <laughs> um, although, uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep noodling it, because it, it might it might mean... Um, something in, incredibly interesting with where her, her arc is going, but I don't know yet. I, I don't have a fully formulated thought yet, so I'm not even going to breach that. Um, one of my favorite uh, things Coulson says is right at the beginning of this episode when he says, um, at least our team is still intact. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're not. 
and he doesn't know that yet. And so uh, the, the big thing that's keeping him together with with the destruction of basically his family, which is, again, the big thing that he and Sky are, are sharing in this, um, and, and uh, you know, they, they have each other, and that's about it. Um, that's what's keeping him together. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens when he doesn't have that anymore either. Um, I don't know. I don't know what Coulson holds on to um, after after all this. Because I mean, like we see him in a moment of 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 um, just fantastic desperation when he is out in the snow. Yeah, because I, I I that is actually my favorite moment. That's my best moment of the episode, frankly, is the speech in the snow, uh, where he's had everybody questioning him from the start of this episode, you know, is he okay? How can we trust you? Um, how do you know, you know, this is Nick, uh, Fury. How do you know to trust shield anymore? Uh, why don't we just quit, you know, over and over again, um, throughout this episode. And he is having those doubts himself. I'm sure. Oh yeah. And I like that moment where he does kind of just vent and, and just, yeah, not so much lose it, but I just love that speech that, you know, you know, we're agents of shield, not agents of nothing, you know, yeah. taking that, you know, flippant, you know, line and, you know, throwing it back at the guys. Um, I, I like that speech a lot. I like, I, I like that moment. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, I don't know why I was thinking, I don't know. This episode, I've been thinking a lot about like, uh, the two thousands Battlestar Galactica, Oh, that's a good call. Yeah, uh, and on a much smaller scale, obviously. <laughs> um, but you know, watching an organization and our heroes within that organization still try to hold things together, where it's all been broken apart, and maybe it doesn't really matter anymore, uh, and still trying to hold on uh, for for uh, their goals. Um, yeah, I just I don't know. This episode, I was thinking a lot about uh, uh, BSG. And it finds it, and it turns out that Ward is a Cylon. Ah, ha, ha. Well, actually, Garrett's a Cylon. Oh yeah, well, G- Garrett would be a Cylon, and then Ward would be like the sleeper Cylon. That That's way. right. Nobody knew about. Um, you, uh, you, you said something I wanted to to to, um, to jump onto, and then I got distracted by Battlestar Galactica, and now. Well, that's easy too. <laughs> No, I don't. No, I don't remember um, what it what it was. Oh, um, I know what it was. I I really like getting to see the, the our crew now um, having having to uh, like like uh, run off on their own and be uh, totally rogue. Um, and like, like, so now their command structure doesn't really hold together anymore. Um, I really like that moment when Simmons says that maybe it should be a democracy now. Maybe they all should have a say. Yeah. And, uh, ultimately she was right about the triplet thing, Mm -hmm. but then, but, but then again, you know, everybody, um, has people that they're not sure if they can trust and for really good reasons because, you know, Hydra uh, infiltrated them for 70 years. So you can't be sure of anything. And so, I mean, like, like so he's like, I, I like that Coulson has a really good point on top of it, too, where, where he doesn't seem like he's in left field not wanting triple in, on the plane either. It's like, well, you were standing right next to him the whole time. You were his right-hand man and you didn't know he was the clairvoyant. Um, that's going to come back to bite him because he had he had... Uh, the clairvoyance right hand man under him the whole time too. Yes. So like he and Triplet have the same thing and they don't they don't even know it. Like like they're a lot more connected than they have than either of them knows right now. I imagine when Colson discovers <laughs> Ward's uh, secrets, uh, I definitely think that uh, a new bond will definitely be between him and Triplet, <laughs> where he'll yeah. go. Well, okay. Yeah. I guess me too. <laughs> Um, I guess you're all right. With, with regards, with regards to the theme of uh, of, of trust in this episode, um, I think it's important to note that every single main character seems to have at least one person that they can cling to that they think that without any shadow of a doubt they can trust and they're not hiding anything from from them. And uh, so, I mean, like Coulson and Sky have each other. 
Um, even even when you go to the bad guys, Ward and, uh, and Garrett kind of have each other, although that's rocky because Ward doesn't like that Garrett, you know, um, had Quinn shoot Sky. But even even within, they sort of kind of have that. Um, if Fitz and Simmons have that moment where they say at least we at least we have each other. There's a lot of pairings right now, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, with Triplet, uh, he's at least got Simmons. Like even losing Garrett, he's got her because they had that big moment last episode, and she's she wanted him on the plane. She trusts him. The only person right now that doesn't have that is is May. Yeah, and her person. That, I mean, the two people that she was kind of like uh, mostly connected to where Ward, who uh, is now revealed to be a double agent, and, and Colton, who doesn't trust her right now. Yeah. And she doesn't broke- trust him, as, as a matter of fact. I mean, that, there's that scene where she walks in and asks for his weapon. It's because, yeah, you know what? She She's suspicious. I mean, who knows what could have gotten programmed into him while they were uh, bringing him back to life. I mean, that's actually, that's a valid fear at this yeah, point. And- I'm glad you brought that up because that Coulson has uh, a really good reason to be so angry with her, which is um, not following orders, but taking a job where she had to spy on her friend. Because she's not just suspicious because she's smart. She's suspicious because she was sent there to be suspicious. Like, that that's her job. <laughs> you know? Um, she she yeah. was like... Well, I mean... Like she was sent there, like, but she, but she says that, like, like Fury, w- she's there because Fury was afraid that w- who, whatever mystery person, um, was actually fully responsible for the Tahiti project. Um, I like that we're learning more about that. Yeah. Fury, Fury didn't just over oversee it; it was somebody else. He's afraid now that that person might have been Hydra. Um, although I, I do think uh, it, it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting that he had those those fears of not knowing who he could trust with that stuff before he had any idea that Hydra was even involved. Um, it was a little bit odd the way May put that that, that she she was she had this weird kind of past tense thing where it it, it om- the way she was discussing it it almost sounded like Fury thought that guy might have been Hydra, but this was well before anybody knew about Hydra. Um, she doesn't come straight out and say that, but I just got this vibe from the scene where it was having a hard time keeping its chron- chron- its chronology straight. I, I think maybe Fury just was suspicious of people people doing something. Maybe not knowing <laughs> it was Hydra. Right. Okay. But it's like, these people seem kind of fishy. But yeah, where Coulson's coming down is, is he's saying, you know, this is where I would have drawn the line. I would not spy on my friends. You know what I think is interesting? Hmm. Uh, Fury has <clears throat> made... I think, what, a two-minute appearance in this series so far and talking about fish tanks. Yeah. And we talk about as much about him as we do any of these other characters. Oh, it's it's interesting how big of a shadow he casts on this series. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, I complained all the way up to last episode about how we haven't seen him again yet, and I'm loving how much of a presence he is without appearing. And... I kind of think, I mean, eventually I feel like we've got to see him in the show again, but as long as it gets renewed, I have faith that we will. I have faith in Fury that he will show back up. Yeah, man, well, I, was like, I, 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 I have faith because I've heard a story <laughs> that he's supposed to show up in the last episode of the season. Um, I hadn't heard that yet. I heard that somebody from Winter Soldier was supposed to. I know that next episode we're supposed to get Hill back. Yeah. But I hadn't heard anything about a confirmation of Fury. Um, that'd be awesome if it happens. But yeah, the longer they make us wait for that, I mean, you know, we're in Coulson's head. He's the one that's really having to wait um, to see Fury. And and now that he's in hiding and every and everything, it doesn't feel. And that that came from you know a a, a, a big movie. There's really good reasons for him not to be here right now. It's not coming off anymore. Like, well, we just don't have the money to bring him in all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, now now it really feels like there's a reason for it, and like there's this wonderful anticipation building. When he finally shows up in this again, it's going to be a big deal. Yeah, I, I well, we're watching him track him down. Basically, I think that's a uh, you know a big deal to his quest. Actually, is finding finding Fury. 
A um, couple other little things before we go on to best moment, worst moment, which um, I, I guess will be easy to pass over because um, we both have the same best moment, yeah. and I don't know if I had a worst moment. But anyway, um, one thing, uh, something I thought was hilarious was uh, the 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 uh, shock troop guy who did the Hail Hydra thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. I That was a hilarious line. It also illustrates Garrett's difference with the Hydra organization. I mean, he's not a yeah, believer. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Um, let me let me just make sure there's nothing else I wanted to bring up. Why don't we? Uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and go on because um, I've got some predictions and we'll do that when we get there. So, sure. um, sure. time for best moment, worst moment. Like I said, uh, mine was yours. Uh, and the mine was yours. <laughs> yeah um man just that speech we are agents of shield that carries weight uh yeah good stuff did you have a worse moment was there anything that rubbed you the wrong way i could only uh jot down in my notes um <sighs> shield is now considered a terrorist group i'm um getting disbanded is one thing but i don't know about getting categorized as a terrorist group um i suppose if they now consider if the, if the u.s government now considers shield hydra uh maybe that seems a little more correct uh but it just seems like shield had been around so while and so ingrained in the marvel universe u.s government um it just seems a little bit at this point to be consider them a terrorist organization um uh, and they they mention it in the previews for next week's episode so it just seems a little a little quick jump into the gun um but, yeah, the, I can see why you'd say that. The sense I got from it was just that they, they've they decided that they don't buy that uh, there's not any Hydra left in there. So they just say the whole thing is a terrorist organization. And, um, you know, that that uh, um, that major guy kind of just wanted to go in and blow up everything. Yeah, well, that that was uh, that was uh, Glenn Talbot. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, and we'll talk about him in a minute. I put, I put okay, him in okay, good. But, but yes, yeah, um, so he, he, he just wants to go in and blow up everything. Yeah, but you know what? I've been thinking about this. Think, I, I think about this, Logan. What can you imagine if we woke up uh, tomorrow and turned on CNN, and the headquarters of the CIA are in shambles and are blown apart, uh, and we learned that right after World War II, the Nazis secretly infiltrated the CIA, uh, and we're about to hatch a big plot. Oh, I mean that's pretty much that's pretty much what happened in in the Marvel universe. Yeah, right. And you know how mind blowing that would be. Oh, uh, so I imagine. Yeah, exactly. But that's why I'm not surprised they're calling it a terrorist organization. I, I suppose so. That's the, that's what I keep thinking back to. Like, like if we found out that the Nazis were actually the CIA this whole time, and then somebody said, "Well, the, the I, I guess we just have to, to classify all the CIA as for the past back seventy years uh, terrorists," I'm not sure anybody would be would really bat an eye at somebody saying that, including sitting senators. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Um, well, I mean, it's cra the thing is, it, it would be a huge unprecedented thing. You wouldn't know how people would react to it. Yeah. Um, at the very least, you'd call everybody that was left that wasn't Nazis incompetent. <laughs> You know, and that's what Talbot kind of does. I mean, he's kind of got this air about him, like, uh, you know, you, you guys are done. Yeah, like he stands on formality a little bit because he needs them to cooperate. But I like that Coulson kind of reads between the lines. Um, you know, when you're in the government that long, you you know code for you're going to the stockade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, considering Coulson had been involved since like he was a teenager, he he definitely knows how to read government code. Oh, uh, but uh, man, that's gotta be a bummer to like be a legitimate. Uh, person working in Shield, not even an agent, just working in Shield. You know, you got your 401k and your benefits, <laughs> and then oh well, great, half of us were Nazis. That completely. <laughs> Do I get my benefits? Yeah, imagine being a Shield chef. Exactly. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, that would that would totally suck. 
Well, uh, oh, and you know what? Also, um, since you mentioned that, I, I just I just remembered this. Um, it was also really cool that we got um, a, a moment where, um, where where Sky really reflected on, you know, uh, three days ago I was a Shield agent, <laughs> and this is what I really wanted. I uh, like like uh, like, like w once again, I'm loving how closely paralleled she and Coulson are, and um, how 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 connected they are. But I also really liked that she kind of uh, undercut her own uh, her own problems in talking with Coulson. Was like, and it, it, it was like, um, you know, I, I can't imagine how how bad you must feel not just having worked with with Shield for as long as you did, but also you literally died for them. Yeah. And the I thing loved, is, Sky sort of kind of did that, that but not the same way. And I really liked the way that, the way they played that. And I don't know, it, 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 like I thought that she had a wonderfully sympathetic moment there. I love that line, actually. You literally die for Shield. Mm hmm. Oh, um, I mean, we say that all the time. Like, I will die for this. I will die for you. Um, he did. He has. He's done it. <laughs> And, and then does doesn't that make it all the more understandable why he's clinging so hard to the remnants of the organization? Mm -hmm. uh, so big idea here, obviously, uh, trust and faith. Uh, that's that's the that's the big stuff. Uh, Manos, did you think of anything else that we should talk about thematically? Um, that's that's pretty much it. Or uh, I also wrote down not giving up when all uh, looks lost. Yeah, um, I, I thought that was kind of in there as well. Um, I really like the way uh, Coulson and um, Reyna, of all people, are sort of mirrored and paralleled here, uh, because he's had his faith shattered, or, or at least shaken, and he's he's clinging to it. Um, the same thing has happened with Reyna, but she's more of a wild card. I find myself really wondering if she's really going to stick around with Garrett or not. It does. I did have some doubts in this episode, actually. Um... Because she's just so disappointed. She um, is because like, oh, look, it's she's like powers. You, you know, she's fighting for a cause. She she says, uh, I, you, you, Garrett says, do you remember what we're doing this for? She says to change the world. Garrett kind of has this moment for a second where he's like, oh, yes, I need to remember the rhetoric. <laughs> you know, because he's not, like you said, he's not a believer. He's not about that. He's he's kind of just just in it for in it for power That's and go going where the where the wind blows i love that it's like can you control people that have this huge cause like usually the people with the the big cause that are so hugely passionate are the people in charge i get the sense that reina might go her own way that's true or she'll at least portray him uh, i agree yeah. it's it's a really interesting garrett's a really interesting villain in that way oh uh, for that exact reason he isn't a believer um and he knows the people around him are, are believers, and he takes full advantages of it. Um, exactly. And I've seen he's a guy that just takes advantage. Oh, and you know what else I just thought of? No, what? Um, he's Well, he's... <laughs> I, I want you to guess, man. I'm the Claire it's, Boyant. It's a like, trivia question. Um, no, no uh, uh, he's got... Um, uh, he's got Quinn working with him. And uh, you know it's it's got to be no accident that they bring him back at the end of, at the end of this. Uh, given the themes of this episode, um, Quinn is just the same way he is, only in a corporate direction. Yeah. Where like neither of them are believers in any, in anything; they're just kind of power mad. Mm -hmm. But then they're trying to control these people that are. I just like that's that's good that's good stuff. Um, because you would expect that. I mean, yeah, yeah, you have a lot of power mad villains and that kind of thing. But it's it's really unusual to go half a season and think that you have somebody with this huge cause, and then um, it turns out that they're just perpetuating that to manipulate people. Yeah, and I've seen yeah. that in real life, like a lot. Yes, <laughs> and good it's call. interesting to see that in fiction. Well, and of course, it's 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 a commentary on that, and I think that it's again, I don't think it's an accident that we're uh, that we're partnering um, a government version of that and a uh, and a business version of that together, mm -hmm. because it happens in both places. Oh, and, yeah, that's a good um, point. You know, I, I, I find um, a lot of the time these days, because, I mean, like, like one of the most popular things to do with social commentary on right now is that very idea. And I find a lot that when it's done, um, usually when, when, I, when I find it the most um, effective is when uh, business and, and, and politics are, are, are kind of thrown together like that um, and both thrown under the bus at the same time. Because at the end of the day, so often, they're kind of the same thing. 
Uh, that's true. I, I, I often see um, social commentary on either. You're right. On either just yeah. one or the other. And you know what? The, the, the mistake, they're pretty the mistake, tied together very, very, very efficiently. Yeah, not to get not to get political in, in the real world right right now, but I'm just saying that like that like so often um, in, in, in fiction you'll see one over the other and the mistake you can make is to accidentally make it look like you're saying um, the power should be in the hands of businesses and not government or the opposite right the power should be in the hands of the government but not business and um, how often is the is the corruption of those things completely intertwined and so we've got that here and I'm really glad they're going there exactly exactly or like oh if we could just you know, get the people back on the side, you know, we can bump this business out of here. It's like, no, that's not really, it's not yet, not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go on to favorite quote. Manos, what was your favorite quote this week, man? Uh, dude, uh, there, I really like the bit where Sky said, hey, we got internet. And uh, he was excited, Colton was excited about that and realized, oh man, things have sunk that low where I'm, excited that we at least got internet i wrote um, that down and i also says, like says, boy have i lowered my expectations yes and then you referred to this line earlier about the um the texas cheerleader line yes god that was funny i'm glad, I'm glad you wrote that down uh my other favorite was <laughs> right at the very end with quinn when he says i wasn't allowed to eat with a fork which would have been fine if i'd been allowed to eat anything but meatloaf <laughs> Like, like suddenly this show got a lot darker and a lot more complicated, but also quirkier all at the same time. Have you noticed that? It does seem to have loosened up. Yeah, I don't know, man. It is, it is really found its stride now. I think. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why the show was still, I don't know, um, uptight. I guess. Stilted. Stilted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and maybe. I don't know. I, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Uh, maybe and there's a part. Be... There's a part of me that thinks they did it on purpose to just to throw us off. And 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 like when we go back and and, and rewatch the early stuff, I got a feeling I'm either gonna feel exactly the same way I did about it and think that all the smart stuff was an afterthought, or that they're absolute geniuses and it was too big of a risk because they lost a bunch of people doing it. Um, one of those two things is going to happen. I suppose so. Yes. So uh, what else oh, we got? Yeah, so let's go on to guest stars. Uh, so, like I said, uh, Patton Oswalt. Um, boy, that's the last person I ever thought to see in this show. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> that was that was pretty cool. Um, well, I mean, honestly, I like I know I know he does a lot of acting and stuff, but like I just wouldn't have expected them to get somebody that big. He's he's really yeah. He's, show. Well, I mean, first off, he's a huge, huge dork like you and I. So yeah, you know, Marvel calls like, hey, you want to be an agent of Shield? You know, he's not going to turn that down. He's gonna, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, but really, kind of before Paxton, uh, there was a lot of kind of no nobody guest stars, and I was very, very like a lot of talented people. But like, you sort of would expect more sci-fi alums and uh, you know, you know, kind of cool coups and things that yeah. you wouldn't expect. Because there's been a lot of that on Arrow, and it's like it's like first season Arrow. You know, every couple weeks to be like, oh wow, they got that guy. Um, and then this show, we hadn't had much of that. Today, we've got two of them. You know, we got Patton Oswalt. Uh, yeah, that's but, true. But the guy who played Glenn Talbot it, um, it was uh, Nathan Petrelli in Heroes. Okay. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out where I had seen him before. And, uh, all right, so Glenn Talbot is now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Yeah. Because he was in the first, he was in the Ang Lee Hulk. Right. Which had a loose connection to this universe, but now I guess it's now fully divorced, uh, as far as I'm concerned, because uh, Talbot died yeah. in that. Well, it's always been fully divorced. Okay, I, mean. I, I, always, I always thought it was a little loose, still connected, but now forget it. Well, no, because Incredible Hulk was a complete reboot, and also the, the other movie is, you know, a Fox movie. Okay, well, it... it blah, blah, blah. Uh, really? but, uh, let's see. Uh, so it's nice actually seeing him. Uh, maybe we'll get a Hulk movie uh, soon. 
Uh, yeah, ish. they're they're still saying there's no plans on that yet. But I, you, you know, this is this is another one of those things where uh, they're bringing in characters that um, are kind of small enough that the movies probably don't want to do anything with them yet. Yeah, or it's just not big of a deal. Um, but but they can because like like you know he's been in some screen stuff, but he's a relative like that, like C list. That's screen. the thing I I think uh, they should keep doing with this show. Is those characters who will fall through the cracks, but fans will know who they are. Oh yeah, absolutely. And sure. you know, get people to play them. And they're that, finally doing that. That could um, get, uh, get actors to play them that could do uh, the roles in the movies if they're needed for you know this film or that film. Uh, the other big comic reference I noticed uh, since we've moved on there um, is uh, there was a mention from Garrett of uh, Johnny Horton, who is Griffin. Uh, in the comics, and uh, he's uh, he's an old Steve Englehart character. Okay, that's what and, he's talking uh, about. Yeah. yeah, and he mentions he mentions the like raptor claws, or, or not the raptor, but like like the lion, lion claws, because uh, he's because he's a cause he's a, he's a griffin. And uh, as soon as he said that, I went, oh, that's somebody. I better go look that up. And uh, <laughs> that, was, that was not a character I was familiar with. Then I looked him up, and I went, oh, his name is Griffin, and he's just a he's a griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go on to predictions. Uh, Manos, I have a few that we didn't bring up earlier. Uh, the first one is how long do you think it's going to be before Coulson finds out what Ward is doing? Like, are, are they going to do it next episode or are they going to stave it off? Because he's they, they, like, like, like Ward's whole uh, uh, mission right now is to go get Sky and kill everyone else. So how long is that going to take? I am predicting, I actually jotted this down, at least within the next two episodes. Yeah, I think you've got to be right about that. That's my feeling. From the previews of next week's episode, uh, definitely Sky, it it looks like definitely Sky will find out. But, you know, who knows when that will happen and when Colson will happen. Oh, and I haven't watched the previews yet, so I'm totally... I was watching previews. Cool. Um, see, I usually don't because I'm always afraid of spoiling things for people. Eric and I have made this mistake before yeah. with with Arrow, where like we'll mention something in a preview, and somebody will be like, "I'm not watching those. I don't want to know anything. How dare you?" So, um, so I usually I usually don't watch them until after we do this show. Um, okay, Manos. Yes. What do you think happened to Garrett? What's with the metal plate? Well, we talked. To, got a, we talked. If, if nobody knows about it, he's got this metal plate in his in his chest. And uh, they show it really briefly, and I missed it the first time I watched the episode. The second time, I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> it's really quick. I mean, I could easily, you could easily have missed it. Uh, yeah, blink it's cool. and you'll miss it. I mean, it's super quick, like maybe so what you, not even a second of screen. Time. So, is this a is this a cyborgy thing? Uh, didn't you? I, I I I I believe Garrett is supposed to be a cyborg in the comics now. So. Yeah. Yeah, in, it's it's really cool yeah, that they're putting that together. We were talking about that. I just wonder if that's what they actually end up doing with it. Let's see. Um, and and I wrote that and I wrote that that question down before um before I I read a, a comment from one of our viewers that mentioned um oh hey he's he, in the comics he's a cyborg. Um, I was like oh wow that's that's awesome I didn't know that. Yeah, neither did I. So that's going to be really really exciting. Like I said, I hope we get a big fight between him and. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and Deathlock. Death, or Deathstroke, Deathlock. <laughs> Doing this in Arrow, man. Um, okay, so um, who who do you think uh, is responsible for Coulson's resurrection? Is it going to be somebody new, or is it Maria Hill? Oh, oh, hmm. Oh, man, that's... You know, I'll be honest, I still have no idea. <laughs> I, I think I think it's Hill. That's an interesting... That's an interesting theory. What makes you think it's Hill? Because, uh... We know they're bringing her back, and I feel like uh, I, I, I just I just I got this instinct of that kind of reveal. They're gonna want it to be somebody we've heard of, and I can't think of who else it could possibly be that we've heard of. So unless it's somebody we've never heard of, um, I feel like it's got to be her because there's just no other big shield agents. We just killed off Hand. <laughs> So I might have said hand before the, the before the big reveal of she thinks Coulson is Hydra, um, you know, and of course now she's dead, so it wouldn't really be all that fitting to have it be her, even if that would had been possible because Coulson can't get any answers out of her now she's dead. Yeah, so that's um, like finding yeah. Ned Leeds was the hobgoblin after he died. 
Uh, but I'll tell you the other reason I think uh, it, it, it could be her now that I'm thinking about it. Um, she and Fury work together so close-knit. You, you you see that in in uh, in Captain America, mm -hmm. um, where he's got this like uh, the the first person he goes to when he has a need to know thing that that uh, that's hugely top secret nobody else knows about it. Um, Maria Hill, get here! It'll I'll be four hours. No, you've got three. Um, I think it's a really there's a really good shot that she oversaw Tahiti. Mm. Yeah. But, but, we'll, but, but we'll find is, out. But the thing is, you know, May believes that Nick Fury doesn't know who who uh was responsible or or was behind she it say that? no she no she says she doesn't know oh, she, yeah um F fury knows because fury fury put somebody in charge of it yeah that's that's the whole thing um but he he doesn't know who he can trust mm. and so um yeah he probably trusts hill more than he trusts anybody else but he also we also know that it's in his character to trust no one mm-hmm um, now you do kind of have to wonder. Well, I was gonna say you have to wonder why he would trust May more than more than Hill, but he doesn't because he didn't tell May who it was. All he told May was watch Coulson, and he's yeah. doing that that, uh, that you know you yeah. know compartmentalization thing where he's giving um, um, different people different missions and little pieces of a larger puzzle that only he has the answers to. Um, anyway, so in, in my mind, I think there's a really good chance that, that it's Hill. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll so note it. Logan predicts Hill. Justin another, predicts another uh, big... no one. I don't know who. I have no idea. <laughs> Manos doesn't predict anyone. Uh, he, he he thinks he thinks it's Devil Dinosaur. Yeah, I think uh, Deathstroke did it. You think that? You think Deathstroke did it? <laughs> well, he's what, done what, everything. That, in, he does everything in Arrow, doesn't he? Yes, he does. So that's going to be our big crossover between Shield and Arrow. You know the you know the Shield Arrow crossover has to happen. Like that need, that has to happen. Yeah. So that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> that actually would be really cool. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, uh, okay, I, I, have, I have a couple more questions. Uh, do you think Ward is going to turn against Garrett before the end of the season? Because no. I do. Oh, really? They're, they're think, kind I, of I it all. It, right? it, like, I, I think if he, he goes against uh, Garrett, it'll be possibly because of Sky. It'll be over Sky, uh, yeah. Because his time, this is what I think. I, I, I think he was somewhat uh, turned slightly while working with the agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, you know, he's sort of created a bond with them. So now, if he has to kill Sky and some of the others, he might have a, you know, a possibility of, you know, maybe turning on Garrett. But I don't know. Well, he is a little torn, and what I like too is that it's not just Sky. I mean, that's a, that's most of it. But I, I now that I think about it, I really like that line where I where Reyna asks him, you know, don't you owe something to Coulson uh, for everything he's done for you? And he says, yes, but I owe Garrett everything. And um, so right right now, he feels like he just has too much of a duty to this guy. But I wonder if that might not change, if, 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 uh, if Garrett won't go too far over the, over, you know, over some kind of a line for him. It's possible. It depends on how solid his, his uh, connection is with Garrett. I mean, if he really does feel like he owes Garrett everything. Well, and that's what he says. Yeah, I mean, if he really does feel that way, you know, he might just be saying that. Oh, it, it sure didn't seem like it. That seemed incredibly genuine, especially because that would be the only reason um, that he would still be working with Garrett after everything. Because remember how in, in, inflamed he was about um, uh, about Quinn shooting Sky, and um, he's he's letting that go as much as he possibly can, gritting his teeth, just because he he, he owes Garrett so much. Um, I mean, what other motivation would he have? He's he doesn't have a cause either. Mm -hmm. My last question is just uh, whether or not we think that Triplet will become a mainstay. I think he will. Uh, I, I think they've done some good layering uh, as far as setting him up uh, to be Ward's replacement. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, I, I like his connections with the group. And also, his, uh, con his, uh, his bond, I guess it hasn't been really formed yet, uh, but his, uh, his connection with uh, Colton I think is interesting. Because right now, Colton yeah. doesn't trust him. 
Uh, and I, I do think <laughs> they're, they're going to trust each other a lot at the end of the season. I think you're right. I think they're, li- they're liable to form quite the bond, and uh, we haven't had any, uh, re- not, now that we know everything about, as much as we do about Ward, we know that we haven't had um, a real romance on this show yet. Um, I think it's likely that next season, if they keep him around, uh, he and Simmons are going to be dating, dating. That's possible. And you know what? I don't know. There's something about, um, oh, who's the other British person? <laughs> What's his name? Ah, uh, Fitz. Fitz, okay. I always get Simmons and Vince. Uh, <laughs> Vince, but he's Fitz. but he's uh, um, but but he's Scottish. Scottish, oh, excuse me. Ex- I apologize, British Scottish people. <laughs> I'm sure I'm the first person to ever do that. <laughs> but anyway, what about him? Uh, I don't know. He seems doesn't he seem a little edgy lately? Oh yeah. Uh, not. I mean, on honestly, of course, you know everybody is on edge. But I don't know. There's been something about the character in the last few episodes that's been making me suspicious of him. They're going somewhere with that. And, uh, and I'm not sure... I'm not suspicious like he's going to do something like evil or something. I just think that like he he's, uh, of everybody right now, he's the one most likely to snap. He, he, he definitely strikes me as the weak one of the herd. And... I don't know. But he's been developed that way all season. Like, you know, you know, you know, we had an episode with, oh, you know what? That whole episode with him and Ward and the kind of bond they form is so much more interesting now. Mm-hmm. I just thought of that. But anyway, I mean, like, you know, we, we've seen that he's very capable, but he's also, like, incredibly insecure. There is. And I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't know if we're looking at, um, I, I don't think he's part of Hydra at all, but no, I, I no. do feel like something. There's no, something loyal, down the road that seems off about him. If they were going to do anything uh, crazy with him, it would be, just ge- just generically, it would be pitting him in a situation where he has to choose between Simmons or S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. Because he has all this loyalty for her that's a lot more important to him than anything else. And like I said, the, the pair-offs are, uh, are, are really interesting. And I think that that's... Um, that, that if they were going to have him do anything off the deep end, it would be it would be something against the the organization or whatever's left of it, or even against Coulson, um, for the sake of Simmons. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and go on now to trivia. Uh, Manos, unless you had anything else that we just didn't get a chance to talk about that you wanted to bring uh, up. Oh, let's see. Do I have anything? Uh, no, we can we can move on. Um, you know what? Give me one second, because I, I forgot about this. The, the, I had one more big point I meant to make earlier, Yo, and yeah. that is I was very surprised when this episode was over. Oh. I don't know if you had that experience. This did not feel like 45 minutes to me. Like, when it was over, I was like, oh, wait, that was already a whole episode? Good Lord. Mm. Like, I totally had that. And I had it twice. The second time I watched it, I had it again. I was like, oh, man, this is this is one of those moments where I wish I was binge watching. <laughs> and, and, and not having to wait till the next week. Because, uh, like, like, like they, are, they are taking their time in the right kind of ways right now. Um, you know, before we, we felt like they were taking their, their time in the wrong kind of ways. But now <laughs> it's like, well, this is just a chapter of a much larger story. And um, I'm just really glad that the last five episodes are going to be week to week and we don't have to wait. Because I would not want to have to wait after the end of this episode. Oh, that would be painful to wait weeks and weeks. It would. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to trivia. I just wanted to mention that. Right. Uh, what, what what was your trivia question from last time, Manos? <laughs> what was the answer? Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, it was who killed uh, Victoria Hand in the comics. Who did kill Victoria Hand in the comics? It was Brother Voodoo's brother. Uh, brother, brother, <laughs> voodoo, I guess. Bro- brother of brother, voodoo. Does he have a name? Uh, yeah, Daniel Drum is the one who uh, killed her. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of a magic plot of revenge for his brother's death. And uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. It had nothing to do with anything Han does. Uh, so I always thought that was kind of a weird uh, thing. And the trivia question from the previous week, I forgot, uh, was who created uh, Victoria had. Um, so I, it was Brian Michael Bendis and Mike Diodato. Now, my question this week uh, uh, is uh, Pat, uh, it's a Patton Oswalt question. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not the first comic related uh, uh, 
project he has been involved with. He's actually done some other stuff. Oh, really? Na name? Yes. Name one wow. of the three projects he's been involved in. Wow. How? I'm sure. I'm sure when I find out what they are, I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's right. Yes. That's all we'll say. Oh, okay, that's a great question, Manos. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, all right, well, my, my trivia question from last time was, uh, what odd one-liner did Coulson spout when he was uh, shooting down those planes that were after Garrett? And the answer was, Booyah! <laughs> Coulson says, Booyah! And I just felt the need to write that down, because it was funny. <laughs> uh, my question for this week, of course, is always from the episode, uh, what kind of scenery does uh, Patton Oswalt's character, Eric Koenig, get to see on Wednesdays? <laughs> That's the question. Well, everybody, thanks always for uh, listening to S.H.I.E.L.D. discussions. Um, I'm riveted right now, and uh, it is a pleasure to uh, now to get to talk about the show every week, and we look forward to doing it for you again, once again, next week. Uh, Manos, thanks again, as always, for joining me. Sure appreciate you. No problem. It's been great. I enjoyed, the, enjoyed doing the show. Uh, this was a great discussion. Had a lot of fun. We will see you again next week. I am Captain Logan. And I am the real Manos. Thank you for listening. <laughs>